Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Foundry Church. My name is Jeff Vandermolen, and I'm the ministry director and online venue pastor here at the Foundry. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. If you've not done so already, I encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat bar. I'd love to know who's worshiping with us. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, I encourage you to text the keyword Foundry online to 94000 and press the number one key. That will be a way for you to get updates and a better, better understanding of what's going on here at the Foundry. A couple announcements to share with you. First, our wisdom devotionals. These devotions were put together by our amazing team of writers and are available to you for free. Here at the Foundry Church, we believe that we're transformed into God's image and we don't transform him into ours. And one way that transformation happens is by being in the, in the word of God. These books contain the whole book of Proverbs inside of them and will encourage and challenge you to grow in your walk with the Lord. So if you've not picked one up yet, it's not too late. You can come anytime, go to the West Doors in the airlock You'll find a hard copy there. Um, if you'd like an electronic copy, you can go to our website, foundrychurch.net, scroll down, you'll find an electronic copy there. Or if you live outside of West Michigan and you'd like me to ship you one, send me an email online at foundrychurch.net and I'll make sure one gets shipped out to you. Another announcement today at 11.15, so shortly after our worship service, we're going to be having our online shakeout on that that is for the kids. So at 1115 Kids, we encourage you to come back. It's an opportunity for you to be in the Word of God and, and to grow in your relationship with Him. Also, I just want to say thank you for your generosity of your offerings and God's tithes. If you'd like to give to the Foundry Church, you can do so by going to our website, foundrychurch.net, clicking on the Give tab and following the instructions there. Or if you'd like to mail your offering to the Foundry Church, you can do that as well. Um, the address of our church is up on the screen now. That's all the announcements I have for you today. Let's open with a word of prayer before we begin with worship. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we get to gather and that we get to praise you. I thank you that you are a God that never changes. Though the world changes all the time, you do not. You're the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And we praise you and we thank you for that. I thank you that you see us, you know everyone's heart, you know what they're going through, the struggles, um, the joys, and God, I just thank you that, that you know us all because you've created us, Father. Um, I thank you that you are a good Father. I pray today that as Eric gives the message, I pray that the words that he gives would be words that come from you. I pray that you'd give him a peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts to receive what it is you have for us today. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the chance to worship you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we worship the Lord today, we look to the words from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, where it reads, In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So let's remember where our help comes from today and who is the author of our story. So sing it out. Come on, church. Let's worship our King. And come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Yeah, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Oh, He has done great things. Through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things, oh God, you do great things. Conquered the grave, and you free every captive and 
done great things Lift it up now
just thank you for your goodness and we thank you that you reign above all things and that um, we don't have to be afraid because we know that you're in control and you work all things together for your good. We pray that as we listen to this message that our hearts would be softened and our ears would be open to hear what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever known a child during the inquisitive years, those young toddler years where life is brand new and everything's an adventure, the ones who have endless supplies of questions, energy, ideas, it's just kind of wonderful. They're like a little bundle of just life and energy. I love that. I think of our kids at that age, and it was such a fun time, exhausting, my word, but still it was wonderful because, well, Everywhere was somewhere to go, whether it was to the backyard or to the grocery store or to downtown Holland or to the desert, a desert mountain hike in Colorado. Everywhere was an adventure. So just imagine me walking on this road with our three kids behind us and these kinds of questions just flying off their lips. Dad, who put these stones here? Dad, do you like the way I'm hopping from brick to brick? How far does this road go, Dad? Um, I'm tired. Can you pick me up, Dad? Are you thirsty? Oh, Dad, I'm so thirsty. Let's get a drink. Do you know where there's water, Dad? Dad, I was wondering, should we ask these people if they want to travel with us? Dad, why is that guy wearing green pants? Dad, I was wondering, um, can we climb on the walls or do we have to like walk on the walls or do we have to stay on the bricks? Dad, which brick is biggest? Are the biggest bricks? Dad, are the biggest bricks, are they the heavy ones or are they the same weight as the the others because you know dad did you know that gravity um if you drop two things and you're just like whoa because you never get a chance to answer them but their mind they're like little sponges and they're just absorbing it but the posture is really really wonderful the posture is a child looking up and it's dad, dad, or mom, mom. And the, these questions are just popping off their lips. Over the last few weeks, um, well, in this series, we, um, we are really looking at our walk with God. So our first chunk of Proverbs was what are the essentials we need for the journey ahead? But this last um, chunk of it, this series we're in now, is really focusing in on our walk with God. In the first week of it, I talked about walking in the fear of the Lord. And that fear, uh, walking in the fear of the Lord means you don't strut. Matt did a lights out fantastic job uh, teaching on trust last week and, and what it means to trust. And we don't just pace around when we trust God. We're not, we're not pacing. We're stopping and, and we're trusting our Heavenly Father. We're in a posture of trust. And today, I want to talk with you about what it is to look up. What does it mean to be a child in our faith and to walk holding dad's hand and looking up and being like, do you think, and just asking questions. Jesus gives us a really beautiful way to understand this and uh, to lean into it. It comes out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 12. Those are the scriptures we're going to read. This comes from the Sermon on the Mount. Now that takes place in Matthew chapter 5 through uh, part of chapter 7. It's a teaching uh, that Jesus did, and Matt said, 
you know, he kind of sat down and he taught. And when he said that last week, I thought, I don't know if I could teach sitting down. That'd be super weird for me. But I really love the posture Jesus had in that. He sat down and he began to teach the people and they tuned their ears. And I'm so thankful uh, Matthew was writing this down and catching what Jesus said. Because in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus really kind of lays out a picture of a kingdom to come. His kingdom coming to this world. And this is one of the things he says in Matthew chapter 7. He says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. For which of you, if your son asks you for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks you for a fish, would, would give him a snake? I love this. I love this. Think of that. Jesus is painting a picture of, of like, you know, kind of like you wouldn't do this. But look what he goes on to say. If you, if, which one of you, if, if your child asks for um, bread, would give him a stone or a fish, would give him a steak? Not a steak, snake. There's an N in there, not a T. Um, which one would give him a, a, a snake? Then he goes on to say, if you then, who are evil, like he just says that to him. He just says that to him. If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do unto others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Look what Jesus says. He says, look, even you who are really messed up people, you know how to give good gifts. Your kid asks for a bread, you give them bread. Or a fish, you give them fish. Asking for the food of the day. That was their food there. So, so what Jesus is saying is that you know how to give good things. How much more does your heavenly father know how to do it? So what I would like to do is just use the rhythm that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter seven. So let's talk for a minute. What does it mean to ask. I once had a mentor, he's a friend of mine still, and he, he's a great guy, and he, and he told me one time, uh, I, was, I was leading some mission trips, and I was trying to figure out funding, because we were taking, I think, at this time, 100 and, um, I think it was 112 students to Atlanta on a mission trip, and we had just a caravan of humanity going down there. I was trying to figure out some food things, and just different supply issues you're going to have. And he said this, well, why don't you call some of these people? And I was like, they won't take my call, even if you give me their number. And he gave me the number of the CEO of a large Christian chicken company. And he said, call him. See if he'll, if he'll give us some food. The answer's no until you ask. It may still be no afterwards, but the answer's no until you ask. If you ask, it may be yes. So ask, find out if it's really no. And what's wonderful is um, that that company ended up feeding our youth ministry um, in D.C. and in Atlanta. The, so in Atlanta the first year, next year I called him back. The CEO didn't take my call. He moved me to a secretary. But um, she sent me to someone who handles donations. And uh, they brought out meals for our entire team. And I found out Chick-fil-A has super good chocolate chip cookies, just FYI. Fantastic. But it was really cool to learn that lesson. The answer is no until you ask. So ask. Ask. R reach out. Make the ask. When Jesus instructs us to ask our Heavenly Father, what, what, he's, um, what he's saying is when you need something, ask your Heavenly Father. Ask him. I love how um, an old Bible commentator, his name was Matthew Henry, I love how he kind of explains this in, in very few words. Ask, as a traveler would ask the way. To pray is to inquire of God. Ask God as though you're a traveler who's lost. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to the women here because I don't know a man yet who's been lost. We're all here, right? We got home. But um, what it's saying is get over yourself and ask. I think one of the reasons we don't always ask directions is we'll figure it out. But what if we're not supposed to just figure it out? What if we're supposed to ask, to inquire of God, as Matthew Henry would say? Last week, Matt um, 
recommended or, or in, encouraged us to trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5. But verse 6 goes on to say, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So it becomes a lot like that child. God, how far should I go down this road? How much longer, Lord, might be the way we would say it, right? Lord, how much longer do you want me in this? God, this season is hard. How much longer am I on this? God, is this the right place for me? Is this a time where I need to stop and maybe rest? Is this a place where I have no more strength? Could you carry me? You know, one of my favorite memories of being a dad of smaller kids was, Dad, my legs are really tired. Can you carry me? I mean, a lot of our family pictures are me with a child on my shoulders, right? Because they would ride on my shoulders and we would hike around different cities and things we were in because I could, I could carry him. I've seen Erica giving piggyback rides to our kids. What, what we're seeing in this is we can ask God, God, is this a place where, um, where, oh God, I'm tired. Can you carry me? Will you give me the strength I need? God, how much longer? God, what should I do? Can I keep going? All these things, it, it tells us one thing, be mindful of God. Be mindful of God by asking all your questions. Ask him. Be like that child. We don't have to know everything. One of the great lies is that we feel like we need to know everything. But when we ask God, it's an honest admission we don't know. We're learning, we're absorbing truth from him. So ask God the questions. When you need to make a decision, when you need... Um, when you have a lot of thoughts racing around in your head, and you're like, oh God, can I give these to you? Can I unload this on you? Can I throw this to you and give them to God? Why would we do that? Because Jesus did. Jesus did this. Ask. Ask is what it says. In Proverbs 3, verses 6, it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Be mindful of him. He will make straight your path. He will be there along the path to answer or just maybe to hear your questions, ask. The next part of the rhythm Jesus gave us is seek. Do you seek for anything? Join me. Join me pre-COVID in like the mall parking lot, December 18. Remember being in one of those? When it's like full and just packed and there's no parking and you're driving up and down and everybody's like, do you want an Orange Julius? No, no, kids. And you're trying to figure out what you're going to do because you're trying to find your way to a parking spot and you see somebody come out of the thing and you're like, hurry up and you follow them to their car like a stalker and, and then they go and they cut over and they go to another aisle and you're like, oh, curses. And the next thing you know, you're like, okay, everybody stop and you turn the radio down so you can really look. Has anybody gotten to that magical age? Somewhere this happened to me. I went from the phase, which was dead broke, kind of college, young adult, where you're so scared you're going to run out of gas, you turn the radio off in case it uses extra gas, to the point where I need to turn the radio off so I can see better. I don't know how that works, but it happens, and it happens a lot. I'm like, hey, Coming into Atlanta, kids, got to turn the radio down and really watch. And they're like, what's wrong with you, man? But what's wrong is I'm getting old, right? But just picture yourself with me. You've turned the radio down. You're spying. You're craning your neck, and you see somebody, and they're doing the thing. They're cutting across to a car right there, and you hurry up, and, you're, and you pull up, and you put your blinker on. And you're like, yes. You seek that parking spot. You make work about it. Seeking takes effort. Seeking doesn't say, well, I hope this is the answer. I'll just do that. Seeking is an active thing. It is a verb. You're out looking for it. It means that you have a prize in mind, a goal in mind. We have a jewel that we're hoping to uncover. Seek wisdom from God. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says it this way. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of, fool, of fools suffers harm. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools comes to harm. When we, when we look at that and realize that, that we need to 
like walk with wisdom. We need to walk, and God gave us his word, and we walk in the word of God. We get in the word of God, and that's how we commune with God and spend time with him reading his word. So when you seek out the wisdom of God's word, you're walking with the wise, the wisest of them all the God of all creation. So we look at that and know that you don't know what's going to come out of certain situations, but pray. Ask God. Pray and ask, but then get to work seeking the answers. Be active in your searching. I'm not talking about cracking open that never used Bible that you don't often read unless you're in a crisis. I'm talking about like when the crisis hits and then cracking that open and being like, now's the time. No, the time is present. Right now, before the crisis hits, get in the word of God and walk with with wisdom. Walk with the wise so that you don't suffer harm. Do it now. Seek now. Because we don't know the situations we're going to face daily. If you're in the word of God, always seeking wisdom, you'll have more opportunity to hear it. If you're in the word of God seeking wisdom, you will have more opportunity to hear it. So be mindful of God, seeking him daily. Seek the Lord daily, valuing his words and instructions. Seek it before you need it. We have ask, we have seek, and finally we have knock. I like this concept, knock, that sound at the door you know, and you're like, oh, who is it? Think of a four-year-old again. Have you ever gone to someone's house um, and taken your kids with you and you get there and you knock and and suddenly like uh, maybe a friend's house or maybe grandma's house, you know, and they said, you know, we'll have dinner around five and you go over there and you knock on the door and nobody answers? You're not gonna be like, well, that didn't work. See you later. I guess we won't have dinner. We'll just go to, I don't know, Red Robin and go grab a burger. No, no. If your kids are with you, what do they do? They're like, and they walk right over and they like look in the window and they're like, I can see grandma, grandma. And they're shouting at her through the window and beating on the window and she's like, oh, oh, and she comes and opens the door. Maybe she didn't hear you knocking, but they're persistent. They really understand the art of knocking. They don't just kind of go, huh, nobody's home. They're persistent with their knocking. And they'll knock from windows, they'll go around and knock on the back door. Why? Because they know she's home, they know that person's home, and they trust them enough to be persistent in their knocking. Knocking shows persistence. Asking, asking is to inquire. Seeking is to search diligently. But to knock requires persistence. It requires bravery and knock over and over and over. There's a story in Luke chapter uh, 15 that Jesus tells, and he says this, if you are, um, if you, let's say a friend, a traveler comes to your house late at night and you have nothing to feed him, and you go to your friend's house and you knock on his door and say, I had someone come to my house and I have nothing to put before them. Do you have any bread? And the man replies from inside, go away. Go away. My family and children are in bed, and the day is over. And, he, and that's their answer. And you persist knocking. Jesus says, I tell you this. The man will get up and give you the bread, not because of your friendship, but because of your shameless audacity. Jesus is inviting us to be shamelessly audacious. Go up, beat on the door, make an effort, make some noise on the doorpost of heaven. Knock, 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 church. Get into it and make an effort. Knock until God answers. Knock until your knuckles are raw. Knock on that door. Jesus invites us to it. In Proverbs 24, 16, it says this, for though the righteous fall seven times, what do they do? They rise again. They rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. The wicked, they they don't last. They have no persistence. Knock, be persistent. Stumble, yeah, we're gonna have some failures, but here's the thing, we're, we're gonna get tired of knocking, but keep knocking. Keep knocking, stay at it. 
We return and knock again and again. We are never shut out. We may mess up. Here's the thing. We, I don't know that it should be we may. We will mess up. We do mess up. But get back up and knock again. Don't give up beating on the doorpost of heaven. Have some shameless audacity in coming to the door of heaven and knocking. Like a child walking with their father, they may trip. It's kind of some of the sweetest and saddest memories of uh, being a dad with little kids is when they lose their footing or they're struggling to get up somewhere and they're working really hard at it, but they get up and they persist in what? Following and asking one trillion questions, right? They just, they're just wonderful. I miss it. It's such a fun time in life. But they just persist because they're with you and they love being with you. And what does a good dad or a good mom do? They encourage them along the way. It's okay, you're doing great, you can keep going. We're almost there. We're almost there, just a few more steps. Keep going, you got this. Look how strong you are. I'm so proud of you. You're doing great. Are you tired? Come here, hop on my back. And they jump on your back and then they breathe heavily in your ear and they ask questions even closer to your brain. Do you think it's heavy when I'm on your back? Yes, I super do. But they're right there and they're on your back and they're walking along and you're talking together. Right on my back. Or wow, you know, like with kids, when they run and play around, you know, I think on a road like this, you're gonna have some wipeouts, you know, and they fall down or they get hurt and they're a little scuffed up. And you're like, oh man, you really bit it that time, right? And you, and you bandage them up and you pick them up and you're like, come on, let's keep going. You're okay, you can do this. You, you, you keep them going and they persist with you. They get back up and keep going. Church, I wanna invite you to something. I want, you, I want to invite you to be mindful. Be mindful of the fact and never forgetting the fact and truth that Jesus loves you. Your heavenly father loves you. And like that dad, he doesn't want you to sit back like, ah, oh, afraid. He wants you to honor him as, his, as your heavenly father, but he wants the questions. Ask, seek, knock, very active, participate participatory things that little children do. And Jesus said, if you want to be in the kingdom of God, you got to be like one of these. And he pointed to children. Children who ask a billion questions, knowing what? That they're loved. That they're loved. And that they're wanted. If you fall down, don't run and hide. Let him help you up. Let him clean you up. Let him get you back on the, get you back on the right path. Be persistent. Be persistent, keeping your mind on him rightly. Ephesians uh, chapter six talks to us about the armor of God and one of those elements of the armor is the helmet of salvation. It protects your mind against doubts, against the lies of the enemy that he might tell you to shame you or trick you. Your old nature may wanna get in. The helmet of salvation protects you when we are persistently mindful of God and we are mindful of him, and we know who he is, and we know he'll protect us, we know he'll take care of us, when we're mindful of him as he is in his true nature, just, loving, merciful, and gracious, when we are mindful of him, we guard our minds, and we push back on the doubts and lies that the enemy tries to push in by always being mindful that we have been saved, not because we're righteous, but because Jesus was righteous and died our death. We've been saved because God loved us and he desired a relationship with us. So we can go and get back up again, again, and again. And we can do the three things that we need to have in our lives as Christians. We can ask, ask God. He is a good God. And if we who are evil know how to give good things to our children who ask, how much more does our Father in heaven want to give, not just the, the comforts of this life, the thing that matters most, salvation in Jesus' name and a transformed nature into the image of his son. How much more will he give to us? He is good and he is just. Seek, be active in this faith, faith. seeking God at every turn. Make every effort to seek him. And knock, knock, boldly approach the throne of heaven and knock, ask, seek, 
knock. This is an active faith. We don't just receive salvation. We respond with the lives we live. Pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you and thank you that you called us not to just sit back and just sit as like couch potatoes spiritually and receive everything, but you called us to a life of active prayer, a life looking up, asking the questions, asking, seeking, and knocking so that we, like a child, may grow in truth and understanding and then begin to be made into the image of him whom all the questions are asked to, our Heavenly Father. Remake us into your image, we pray. We love you, Lord, and give you praise. Amen.
For me, the lie is that I have to always have the answer. And if I don't have the answer, I have to make it up really quick so it looks like I do. It's a lie. I don't. I have to ask, I have to seek, and I have to knock. And I have a lot of things I do that on. I'm learning to do that more and more. It's not easy for me. It's not gonna be easy for you, but it is wonderful when we're able to bring that thing. Maybe it's a marital relationship or a relationship that is really breaking and something's wrong and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Then ask, seek and knock. Maybe it's a child who's straying or defiant or things aren't going well and you don't know what to do or they're struggling through all that's gone on these past few years and you're scared for their emotional, spiritual health. Ask, seek and knock. Take them and hold them before the throne of grace. Ask God. Seek God and knock and ask God for what you desire for that child. Ask God to show you what he desires for that child. Could be a degree you're working on. God, what am I gonna do with this college degree that I've been working on? Is it worth, am I gonna be in this field? Ask, seek, knock. Friends, the, the, the reason we do it is because Jesus Christ modeled it. He was a son who was always looking up to the Father. Asking, seeking, and knocking. So let us be just like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us be children who have a lot of questions, eager feet to go seek and find the answers, and a willing hand to knock, 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 and be persistent until heaven opens the door we're to pass through next. As you get ready to go from this place, I invite you to be active in your asking, seeking, and knocking, and see that God really is there to be heard, to be found, and to be, I think, just pursued. Pursued. Enjoy. Enjoy the asking, seeking, and knocking. And be faithful and persistent in it as you do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grace and peace to you, my friends. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us for our worship service today. I hope that the words that were spoken will challenge and encourage you to grow in your relationship with the Lord. I just encourage you to spend some time reading your Bible, be praying, and be listening to what God might be calling you to next. If you'd like to pray with somebody or have a prayer request that you'd like our team to pray over, you can text the keyword Boundary Online to 94000 and press the number three key. Somebody on our prayer team will get back with you shortly. That's all the announcements I have for us this week. Um, I'm so glad that you're able to join us. Enjoy this beautiful weather and have a great week, everyone.